Baby boom's reluctance to pay attention to real issues of power resulted, well, from the fact that, that, that we had power. We had some power. Because freedom is power. And, and, and when it comes to freedom, the baby boom was full of it. You know, I mean, we were the first middle class majority generation in history, in all of history. We had all the varieties of freedom that affluence provides, plus we had all the other varieties of freedom provided by the relaxation of religious convictions, sexual morality, etiquette, and good taste, you know? The institutions that, that, that enforce prudence and restraint, they had been through a world war, a uh, prohibition, a depression, another world war, and Elvis. They were tired, they were tired, you know? And, and so we, the baby boom, were allowed to fall under the power of our freedoms and we powered through them and 60 years on we are still at it letting not age satiety tedium or erectile dysfunction stand in our way you know and yet always at our back we hear this nagging thought that with power comes responsibility kill both mary and we don't want any responsibility. I mean, we just don't want any responsibility. We're a, just a, a bad generation in the responsibility taking department. I mean, we've got an impressive record of blame shifting, duty shirking, unaccountability, refusal to admit guilt, or better, to admit to every kind of guilt and then tell everyone we've moved on. <laughs> no. Gigantic national not my fault project has been undertaken with heroic amounts of time, uh, 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 effort, and money devoted to psychology, psychotherapy, sociology, sociopath, social work, social sciences, Scientology, science, science chemistry, the brain, brain chemistry, serotonin uptake, reinhibitors, inhibitions, sex, sex therapy, talk therapy, talk radio, talk radio personalities, personality disorders, drugs, drug free school zones. Internet addiction, economics, the Fed, PMS, SATs, IQ, DNA, <laughs> evolution, abortion, divorce, no-fault car insurance, the Democratic Party, and diagnosis of attention deficit disorder in small boys. You know, you know, you know. Shouldn't. When I started thinking about politics, I shouldn't have been thinking about freedom, mainly. I shouldn't have been thinking about power, even, mainly. I should have been thinking about responsibility. But I wasn't, you know, and it's too late now. I'm a child of my era, and speaking of the 1960s, uh, here are three slogans from three posters that never, ever existed in the 1960s. <laughs> Sisterhood is responsible. Black responsibility. Responsibility to the people. You know, I'm trying to imagine me and my bratty little friends out there on the barricades waving our fists and yelling responsibility to the people didn't happen. You know? Now, of course, the best way to have a good political system is to avoid politics, but political disengagement that's, mm, deprives us of opportunities for yelling at politicians and pushing them around, which in this is occasionally useful and always a lot of fun. Uh, and, 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 now, look, there are certain things, of course, that, that, that we can reasonably demand from our political system. But almost all of these things are get out of here rights. And, and often it's the political system that is violating those rights itself. You know? you know, we don't get in trouble in this country by 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 making our politician by 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 making our politicians mad. We we get in trouble by trying to make our politicians like us, you know. The, I mean the most sensible request of government is not do something, do something, but quit it. Quit it is the, what we want to do, you know. And, and, I, and these gimme rights and the goodies that we expect to gain from them, we're getting politics mixed up with Halloween, you know? <laughs> and, 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 and politicians don't mind, because politicians, hey, politicians love creating programs of incentives and disincentives for the populace, you know? Trick or treat, right? You know? And now, Goblins and ghouls political system, that's fine for those of us who are really scary people. Yeah. But for the rest of us, well, we're going to go house to house, from White House to House of Representatives to the Senate, ringing doorbells furiously as we may, and we're going to get nothing but healthy fruit. You know? you know, if there's something we want, politics shouldn't be our first resort. Politics, it's all taking, no making. 
you know. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's, the thing about politics is, you, you know, the real world's just not zero sum. The real world is not zero sum. We can make more money. We can make more stuff. We can make more food. We can make more babies. But politics is zero sum. Politics is zero sum because there's only so much power. And power that I have over you is power that you lose to me. And also, political systems are different from other social systems. I mean, we live in, 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 in lots of different social systems, but only one of those systems, the political system, has legal monopoly on deadly force. Now, when we're dealing with the rest of the, of the social system, say, say we're dealing with the, that bunch of social snobs out at the country club with their system of blackballing us, you know? I mean, they're, they're allowed to ban us from the tees, but they're not allowed to pick us off with sniper fire from their clubhouse, you know? <laughs> and the government can, you know? It makes it very different. Because government is zero sum, there aren't two congressmen wedging their fat butts into the same seat in the House of Representatives. We aren't 300 million Supreme Court justices telling nine old Washington shysters in black bathrobes, you know, whether or not they're going to get a lawyer at Gitmo, you know. The chiefs of, uh, chiefs of the Joint Chiefs of Staff aren't all commanders in chief, uh, commanding forward march to each other until they collide in a group hug, you know. And so, <laughs> This is why we have to be so careful about giving power to people. You know? And nonetheless, we are always, we're just continually tempted to give power to the government. Uh, and I just, you know, I, I, I don't, I think it's because the government is just, it's such a huge tool. It's this huge, powerful tool. It's an incredibly powerful piece of machinery that's almost impossible to stop, never mind that it doesn't know where it's going, you know? Uh, I mean, we're tempted to use that tool for everything. It's like using, you know, your new power drill to change the, 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 the battery in your wristwatch, you know. Or, or to put this in different terms, um, the government is a Rottweiler ready to be unleashed on your problems and you've stuffed raw meat down the front of your pants. You know? <laughs> uh, now, I think, I think it's a very good idea to get uh, uh, as much government power down to as small a local level as you possibly can so that you can have the kind of clean and efficient and graph-free <laughs> politics that you have here in Chicago. <laughs> but, you know, nonetheless, I mean, there is, there is something to this. John Sununu, you know, John Sununu, uh, uh, the, the uh, former governor of New Hampshire and the former chief of staff for George H.W. Bush, uh, he and I, he, he's the guy who like told me about this because because he, uh, besides being a politician, uh, John's a mechanical engineer, and he said that one of the goals of mechanical engineering is what's called a short control loop. You know, and he compares reliance on local government to a short control loop. See, like the hot and cold faucets in your shower, those are short control loop. Um, now, 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 what if instead of being located in the shower, your, your, your hot and cold faucets were, were all the way down in the basement, you know? That would be a long control loop, you know? And, and, and you see, it's not that a short control loop always works, because uh, you could be out of hot water, but, but it's a lot better to be standing in the shower fiddling with a useless faucet there than it is to go marching through the house uh, 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 butt naked and dripping wet, you know, amazing the children and shocking the cleaning lady down two flights of stairs and into the grungy basement and fiddle with the useless faucet down there, you know? So Sununu says, you know, if, you're, if our neighbor on the local sewer commission votes to raise our sewer rates, we can go next door and yell at him or stuff a potato up the tailpipe of his car, you know? <laughs> But uh, if we uh, stuff a potato up the tailpipe of the limousine of the President of the United States, uh, that's a federal crime, uh, or, or, or they'll make it one if we try. Um, <laughs> see, but despite the complete and evident common sense of the short control loop argument, we're just deaf to it. We're deaf to it. When something's wrong, we, we don't consult the sewer commissioner next door, uh, even if what's wrong is backed up sewage. Uh, uh, we go straight to Washington and bypassing even the House and the Senate, we expect the president himself you know, to take time off from trying to get his limo started and, and, and come over to our house with a plunger. You know? uh, and, and, you know, obviously this is not particularly efficient, and obviously it's wildly expensive, you know, and, and it's just, uh, and yet that expense, that expense that we pay for politics 
politicians are so easily able to justify this. This is one of the reasons we have to keep a very careful eye on these devils. I mean, because politicians, they can, using political logic, I think I can justify not only that kind of spending that they do in Washington, I, I can justify anything. I, I, I can justify shooting convenience store clerks. You know, I, I can show you, I can prove to you using political logic that shooting convenience store clerks stimulates the economy. <laughs> See, jobs are created in the high-paying domestic manufacturing sector at gun and ammunition factories. Additional emergency medical technicians, security guards, healthcare providers, and morticians are hired. Uh, the unemployment rate is lowered as job seekers fill new openings on convenience store night shifts. Uh, and, and, and money stolen from convenience store cash registers stimulates the economy where stimulus is needed most in low-income neighborhoods where people who shoot convenience store clerks go to buy their crack. You know? <laughs> now, Considering all the good that shooting convenience store clerks do, I'm just amazed that everyone in the House and Senate isn't smoking crack and shooting convenience store clerks, you know, clerks, store clerks, you know, this, this very minute, you know.